rivalry between Hong Kong and Singapore has existed for more than half a century. Both are former British colonies. They are also home to two of the busiest shipping ports in the world and are top financial centres. Hong Kong is often regarded to be more dynamic, but less friendly and a bit more crazier. Whereas Singapore is seen as more sanitised, but less cramped and with more pleasant surroundings. So in this video, we will find out which does it better, Hong Kong or Singapore, by comparing their demographics, geography, economies, infrastructure and quality of life. And then once we have compared them, we will ask you which one you would rather live in and which one you would just rather visit. So sit back, relax, and we hope you learn something new. Let's kick off this video by taking a look at where they are both located geographically. So Singapore, officially the Republic of Singapore, is a sovereign island city-state in maritime Southeast Asia. And then Hong Kong, officially the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, is a metropolitan area and special administrative region of China on the Eastern Pearl River Delta in the South China Sea. To make things easier, we will refer to both of them as countries or nations. Let's now move on to their demographics, starting off with their populations and population densities. So with 7.5 million people, Hong Kong is the 104th most populated nation in the world, above Laos and below Sierra Leone. Singapore has around 5.85 million, making them the 114th most populated nation on Earth, above Denmark and below Turkmenistan. Singapore and Hong Kong are actually the third and fourth most densely populated nations on the planet, respectively, at 8,109 people per kilometer squared in Singapore and 6,677 people per kilometer squared in Hong Kong. To put this in perspective, France has just 119 people per kilometer squared, the US just 36, and Australia 3. Singapore's population is growing much more rapidly at 2.1% compared to Hong Kong's 0.76%. Let's now take a look at average life expectancies. This is where both of these nations seriously perform well. So remarkably, at 85.29, Hong Kong ranks as the nation with the highest life expectancy in the world. In fifth place, you will find Singapore at an impressive 84.07, above Italy and below Macau, another special administrative region of China. Singapore, however, definitely takes the win on the next one, the average age of the population. The younger the population is, the larger the workforce and less strain on healthcare and looking after the elderly. So at 35.6 years, Singapore is the 83rd oldest country by average age in the world. Hong Kong is the 7th oldest in the world at 45.6, so exactly a decade older on average. In Hong Kong, Cantonese remains dominant with 96% of the population speaking it. As for Mandarin, it's around 48% and English around 46%. Singapore's four official languages are Malay, Mandarin, Tamil and English. Because of its bilingual education policy, most citizens speak two or more languages, usually English, their ethnic mother tongue and potentially others. And finally, with 1.1 each, Hong Kong and Singapore have the equal second lowest fertility rate in the world, only behind South Korea. This is the average amount of children a woman will give birth to. To put this in perspective, the highest in the world are Niger, Mali and the DR Congo, with 6.9 and 5.9 respectively. Alright, time for some geography, starting off with their land sizes, a category that both of these nations obviously fall quite short on. So in 183rd place, we have Hong Kong, at just 1,104 kilometers squared. And then we have Singapore, which is even smaller, at just under 710 kilometers squared. Incredible. Most of the countries that are of similar size to Singapore and Hong Kong are primarily small islands that are very insignificant on the world stage. However, these two are both powerhouses. Let's now take a look at how much coastline they both have. So in 144th place, we have Singapore with just 193 kilometers of coastline. And then in 96th place, we have Hong Kong with 754 kilometers. However, as mentioned earlier, both of these nations have two of the busiest shipping ports in the world. 
Singapore's port actually ranks as the second busiest in the world, only behind the port of Shanghai. Singapore connects more than 123 countries and 600 ports from its spot on the southern end of the Malay Peninsula. And then Hong Kong's port is the fifth busiest in the world. The port of Hong Kong connects the region to over 470 locations around the world. The highest point in Singapore is Bukit Timar Hill, standing at just 182 metres high, which is absolutely dwarfed by Hong Kong's highest point, Tai Mo Shan, which stands at 957 metres tall. Singapore is situated near the equator and has a typically tropical climate, with abundant rainfall, high and uniform temperatures and high humidity all year round. Many of its climate variables, such as temperature and relative humidity, do not show large month-to-month -month variation. I visited Singapore in 2017 and it was like no place I had ever been before. The humidity there is mind-boggling. When you step out of your nice air-conditioned taxi or the hotel, you are literally hit by a wall of heat. It is insane, especially for someone from the UK like myself. Hong Kong's climate is subtropical, tending towards temperate for nearly half of the year. During November and December, there are pleasant breezes, plenty of sunshine and very comfortable temperatures. For this one, I'd have to give the win to Hong Kong, as for parts of the year, the weather is rather enjoyable. In terms of neighbours, Hong Kong is a stone's throw away from Shenzhen, a mega city of more than 12 million people. It is also home to the second most skyscrapers over 150 metres tall in the world, only behind, guess who? Hong Kong. Macau, another special administrative region of China, is around one hour away by ferry, another super rich affluent region where you'll find some of the richest in the world splashing their cash. Singapore is surrounded by Malaysia and Indonesia. It is around three hours drive away from Malaysia's capital Kuala Lumpur. Across the Singapore Strait you will find Batam, an Indonesian tropical island. Okay, so now let's move on to some economy and financial statistics. This section should be interesting. Starting off with the big one, their GDP or economy size. At around 369 billion US dollars, Hong Kong ranks as the 38th richest nation in the world, above Egypt, which has a population of over 100 million, and below, guess who? Singapore. So Singapore ranks as the 37th richest nation on earth, above of course Hong Kong, and below, strangely enough, the country that it is below in real life, Malaysia. Seriously impressive considering how low their populations are compared to the nations around them. Let's now take a look at their GDP per capita. So to no surprise, Singapore wins this one at around 64,000 US dollars, putting them below Denmark and above Qatar. Compared to Hong Kong's 49,000 US dollars, which ranks them 23rd in the world, behind the British Virgin Islands and above Germany. Now that we know their GDP per capita, let's take a look at the average price of a one bedroom city centre apartment. So Hong Kong comes in slightly more expensive at around 2,200 US dollars per month and then just over $2,000 for Singapore. So for the average Joe, Singapore pays higher average wages and slightly cheaper accommodation. Of course, this doesn't really apply to the many billionaires living in the city centres. I'd say, as a whole, Hong Kong is more expensive than Singapore if we're going off the these figures you can see here. Although it is notably more expensive to smoke or drink alcohol in Singapore. And more astonishingly, cars are seriously expensive in Singapore, with a Volkswagen Golf costing around 176% more than in Hong Kong. Speaking of lots of money, let's see how many millionaires and billionaires they both have. Wow, so Hong Kong has a crazy 520,000 millionaires, which is around 8.3% of their population, the 17th most in the world. Singapore just comes below them in 21st place, with around 270,000 millionaires, or around 5.5% of their population. And when it comes to billionaires, Hong Kong performs even better, with 71, making them the 6th highest in the world, which is mind-boggling considering their population wouldn't even qualify them as a megacity. This means there are around 8.8 .8 billionaires per 1 million people in Hong Kong. Singapore comes in equal 20th place with Turkey, with 27 billionaires. This means there are around 4.5 billionaires per 1 million people in Singapore not too shabby either. Now let's finish off this section by quickly taking a look at the percentages of their GDP by sector, starting off with Hong Kong. So just 0.1% is from agriculture, 
7.6% from industry and 92.3% from services. And then we have Singapore with agriculture 0.5%, industry 24.8% and services 75.2%. All right, the penultimate section, quality of life. So first and foremost, let's see how they rank in a global quality of life for cities index. So Singapore wins this one, ranking as the 25th most livable city in the world. Hong Kong then ranks as the 36th. Their high living costs and very hot living conditions definitely stops them from ranking higher. They both have public healthcare, so that's a big tick for both of them. Hong Kong has 16 universities or higher education centres, compared to just 8 in Singapore. When it comes to the Global Happiness Index, Singapore takes the easy win, ranking 31st in the world above Brazil and below Italy. Hong Kong, however, not so happy, ranking as the 78th happiest nation in the world, putting them below Greece and above Croatia. So it turns out money doesn't buy happiness. Nah, just kidding, this is most likely to do with the political instability the people of Hong Kong face. In the Global Peace Index, it's another clear win for Singapore, ranking them as the 11th most peaceful country in the world. Hong Kong, however, does not show on this index. So we'll take a look at China instead, who ranks as the 100th most peaceful country in the world. Not a surprise when you have the biggest population, second biggest economy, and are the fourth largest country by land size in the world. When it comes to global corruption, it's yet another win for Singapore, ranking as the 17th highest in the world. Hong Kong, however, does appear in this index, and surprisingly well, in 25th place. In terms of pollution, it's yet another win for Singapore. The higher you rank here, the worse the pollution levels are in your nation. So Singapore ranks in a respectable 97th place, compared to Hong Kong's 42nd place. When it comes to the crime index, Hong Kong finally snatches a win, ranking as the 7th safest country in the world compared to Singapore, which is in 24th place, to my surprise. And finally, let's end with healthcare index, where Singapore takes yet another win, ranking as the 27th best in the world, compared to Hong Kong's 40th place, both relatively low considering how rich and developed they are. And finally, to end this video, let's compare their infrastructures, starting off with their tallest building. So standing at 484 metres tall, Hong Kong's International Commerce Centre is the 12th tallest in the world, beating Singapore's Guaco Tower, which stands at just 290 metres. As mentioned earlier, Hong Kong has the most skyscrapers over 150 metres tall in the world with 482, compared to Singapore, which has just 94. Still rather impressive. Singapore's longest bridge is the Benjamin Shears Bridge at 1.8 kilometres long, compared to the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, which is 55 kilometres long. It is a bridge tunnel system consisting of a series of three cable stayed bridges, an undersea tunnel and four artificial islands. It is both the longest sea crossing and the longest open sea fixed link in the world. Hong Kong's MRT, or Mass Transit Railway, is ranked as the best in the world and has around 5 million riders per day, compared to Singapore's which comes in as the 6th best in the world. Both Singapore and Hong Kong are home to two airports, Singapore's Changi Airport ranking as the best in the world and Hong Kong's International Airport ranking as the sixth best in the world. So a switch around from their rail rankings. I have personally been to Changi and it is incredible. So now it is your turn, let us know in the comments below which one you would rather live in and which one you would rather visit. I think I would personally live in Singapore as it's a bit more chilled, then I would happily visit Hong Kong as I've never been before. Thank you so much for watching, if you enjoyed this comparison please feel free to drop a like and if you love this sort of content and learning about countries and cities from around the world then consider subscribing, it is completely free and we've got plenty more to come. Thanks again and we'll see you very soon in the next one.